John O'Leary Hawthorne's article, The Bundle Theory of Substance and the Identity of Indiscernibles, published in the journal Analysis in 1995. Now, before we say anything about Castor and Pollux, let's review something about universals. Universals are those uh, um, universal principles of which particular things partake. So, um, uh, blue is often thought of as a universal. Uh, there's blue here, and blue here, and blue here, and the blue property that is in one thing is the same as the blue property in another thing. Now, it's not the same shade of blue, but we're not talking about shades of blue. We're talking about just blue, just the fact that there is blue here, and the fact that there's blue here, the fact that there's blue here, the fact that there's blue here, the blueness over here may not be the same shade as, uh, the blue over here may not be the same shade as this, but the blueness, just the blueness over here is the same as the blueness over here. These four objects share, and this tie also share the property of blueness. Well, that's a universal property, and it exists in more than one place, according to uh, one conception of universals. Now, according to Plato's conception, uh, universals do exist, but ultimately we must understand that universals are transcendent things. They are the forms of which Plato spoke. There is a form for every universal, and it exists in a higher immaterial world. Now, the Aristotelian notion of universals is immanent rather than transcendent. In the Aristotelian idea, universals exist in this world. And Armstrong, D.A. Armstrong, goes so far as to say that universals exist in this world, and they're physical things. Normally, we think of physical things as things that cannot be located in more than one place. But, according to Armstrong's analysis, universals are physical, and they still exist in more than one place, insofar as physical things are the things physics can study, and physics can study universals. Now, what we need to do for understanding O'Leary Hawthorne's article is um, keep the Aristotelian and Armstrong conception of universals in mind, imminent rather than transcendent, in this world. And also keep in mind they can exist in more than one place. Now, let's talk about Castor and Pollux. These are two spheres existing in this universe all by themselves, having all their properties in common. Now, think about bundle theory. What does bundle theory involve? Bundle theory is the theory that there is no substance, that this marker has all these properties, the property of being more than three centimeters in length, the property of having a blue cap, and so on. All the properties just are the marker. There is no substance underneath the properties that has the properties. The marker itself just is the bundle of properties, according to bundle theory, this particular principle in metaphysics. Now, presume for a moment that universals exist in the imminent conception, the Aristotelian Armstrong conception, not Plato's idea of universals. Universals exist. Bundle theory is true. What does that mean? Well, it means that Castor and Pollux are the same object. It's not two spheres, contrary to what Max Black said. So, now look at it this way. Here is a whiteboard marker having properties like the property of having a blue cap, the property of being uh, so many centimeters long and so many millimeters in diameter and weighing so many grams and so on. And here's a whiteboard marker having exactly the same properties as I just listed over here. But this whiteboard marker has the property of being in my right hand at this exact moment. And this whiteboard marker does not have that property. So of course they're two distinct markers. Well, no problem. But observe. According to bundle theory, this is a bundle of universals, including all those universals I listed and the universal of being in someone's right hand at this particular time, and um, maybe a few other universals like uh, being, being to the right of my nose or something. Uh, this, has, this is a bundle of universals, but it includes a smaller bundle. Let's call it the mini bundle. There's a mini bundle over here. And this has the same mini-bundle. That bundle exists in two places at once. So what do we have with Castor and Pollux? Well, all we have is this. We have two locations for the same bundle of universals, and there just doesn't happen to be any extra universal by which you can distinguish them. And what's so strange about that? Nothing strange about that. And why should that count as evidence against 
the principle of the identity of indiscernibles. Why should that count as evidence against PII or against bundle theory? O'Leary Hawthorne would like to know. Now he explains he's not um, uh, giving an argument for bundle theory or for PII, and he acknowledges it's possible that these theories are mistaken. Maybe they're not viable theories, and maybe there are good reasons for us to consider that they are not viable theories, but it's not Max Black's counterexample. Max Black's counterexample just shows that if bundle theory is correct, then it's perfectly possible for one object to exist in two places at the same time. Because an object just is a bundle of universals. And if one universal can exist in two places at the same time, and if two mini bundles of universals can exist in two places at the same time, why can't the bundle that includes uh, the whole of an object exist in two places at the same time? Not these, because one is left of my nose and one is right. One is in my right hand, one is in the left. But Castor and Pollux don't have those distinguishing properties. Those two bundles, uh, those, uh, those two instantiations of bundles, one on this side of that universe, one on the other side, are the same bundle, having all and only the same properties. So Castor and Pollux are identical after all, and one object can exist in two places because that's what universals do, and objects are bundles of universals. O'Leary Hawthorne, The Bundle Theory of Substance and the Identity of Indiscernibles.